Well, Happy New Year and welcome into the Harness Half Hour, proudly brought to you by HRNZ Marketing. I'm Jess Smith and this week on the show we talk to Darren Keast, Scott Phelan and Jamie Gamerson and today we also have James Renshaw stepping in for the holiday bookmaker update. But first, here are the headlines. Cambridge celebrated their centenary in style on Friday night with a large on-course crowd present. The club also held two feature races to go alongside the special meeting. The Trotters' flying stakes was won by Temporale for trainer-driver Tony Herlihy, defeating Speeding Spur and Massive Metro. While Turn It Up continued his huge rise to the top by winning the Waikato Flying Mile for Mark Purden and Natalie Rasmussen. Star Galleria was second and Ashley Lokaz was home third. Seven-year-old comic book hero was successful in the Te Aroha Paces Cup on Saturday afternoon for Todd McFarlane and Ray Darby. Second was Parker and third was Got A Moment. And the Summer Nelson Cup went the way of the Tim Trathan trained three-year-old Dan and Dave on Sunday afternoon. The son of Better's Delight had only previously had two wins before collecting the biggest win of his career to date. Second was Huey Lewis and third was Janora. And it was announced over the weekend that Breeders' Crown winner Showgate is now retired after an injury last week. That was reported by her trainer Regan Todd. She will now start a career as a broodmare. Well, one young trainer who's really been making massive headlines over the holiday season has been Darren Keast. Uh, Darren, of course, picked up training win number eight over the weekend. Darren, congratulations, and what a roller coaster it must be for you. Yes, hi, Jess, and hi, everyone. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Like, um, before Nelson, I was going into it pinching myself, and I still, can, uh, still cannot believe it now. It's been unbelievable. <laughs> And of course, first season as a trainer, as I mentioned, eight wins already and a very special day for you as well to get that first win. Yeah, no, it was an absolutely incredible day, you know, just like not many. To get to get a win on your first day, uh, on your birthday is pretty remarkable, but to get your first training winner on your birthday, uh, I think something special too. And yeah, it was, it, was, it was a very special day to be there. I took a team of five Five horses to Westport with me. I had I had I, I had an open mind. Like I went over there and I said I was sitting there with the owners of V Mine tonight, Mark Nickel, at the campground where we were staying. And I said to him on Christmas Eve, I said, um, you know, Mark, I think if if I don't drive a, a winner before over this Westport period, I, I'll hand my license in. <laughs> and I went on and drove eight winners. You know, it's pretty remarkable. Oh, it, it's very remarkable. And so yeah, on that first day, not only did you pick up your first training success, you had two. Day two, you had three. And then another two at Reefton. And, um, you know, to have the likes of Lovey Dovey Moment put it all together must have made it even more special. Yeah, no, that that uh, to Lovey Dovey Moment, it's been, he's been a headache of a horse all along. And to get him to get him right on the day, all the work that my old man and Henry had of Western have put into him, it's just been... It's starting to pay off now, you know. Like we we knew he had an engine, but it was just having to get him to get him confidence. It was just a confidence thing with him, and to, for him to get it, it's just a shame they didn't do the bonus this year. <laughs> exactly. Well, they might have to bring it back, particularly for for you next year if you're going to be in that form on the coast. And Darren, what was it that made you decide to take out a trainer's license and and go down that line? Well. To be honest with you, just I was um I, I just thought like you got to give it a crack at some stage and why not now? You know I had I had a lot of I had a lot of support from my from my dad's owners Mark Nicol Phil Cousin I had a heap of support from them they backed me and um, not only that my partner Ashley she she's been a, the backbone of this she's behind most of it she runs my Facebook page for me and um, yeah. Phil's been unbelievable, you know, Phil and Marie, uh, Eric, the late Eric Ryan, his daughter Marie and Phil, they had Eric's colours and um, I was fortunate enough to inherit them over at the coast and I was privileged enough to wear them on Lovey Dovey Moments the second and third day, so just to do that was pretty special. Oh, exactly, and just so great to see Eric's colours out there again. And well, going forward, Darren, as you mentioned, you've had a lot of support, but, um, you know, great family support as well. Your dad would be a big mentor of yours? Yeah, no, he's an unbelievable mentor, just like, not, um, he's, uh, 
without him, I wouldn't have been able to do it, you know. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And, of course, um, I see your, your Facebook page, as you mentioned, actually doing a great job with that, but you're promoting a new ownership opportunity with your stable. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, while well, I was over at the coast, I um, purchased a maiden, I purchased a maiden myself, and I thought, oh, well, I'll try, I'll do my best to syndicate it, so um, uh, I think I'm up to about 50% now, sold, mm-hmm. shares sold, so there's probably still 50% available there, so, yeah. Okay, and if anyone's interested or maybe they want to send a horse your way, Darren, um, through the Facebook page or cell phone's the best way to get in touch? Yeah, probably the yeah the cell phone or Facebook page emails are just a, sometimes a bit awkward. You know, you get a lot of spam emails and that. But mm-hmm. probably like Facebook or uh, cell phone would probably be the best. Yeah. Great, and you're always willing to take on new horses if people want to send them your way. Oh yes, definitely. Like um, the gates always open for anybody if they've got any inquiries, they can either message me or as you did the Facebook page, just any anyone really. Great. Well, you're on a wonderful roll at the moment, Darren, and it's really great to see. Congratulations, and I'm sure many, many more wins to come. Thanks very much, Jess, and thanks, everybody. And, of course, it's that time of the podcast now where we find out what's making headlines on social media. Starting off with New Zealand, and the first driving win came for Kieran Tomlinson. That was at Nelson on Sunday. Well done, Kieran. Also, Bruce Hadley drove his first winner at Te Aroha on Saturday. That was in the, in the amateur driver's race. And Team Teal events are launching with Hororata's Touch of Teal fashion contest now featuring on our Facebook page. You can find out more on the HRNZ Facebook page. Uh, From Australia, my field marshal won the Fremantle Cup over the weekend, Pat's Delight won the Shepparton Cup, and Marcula, Amaretto Sun and Speeding Spur will head across the Tasman to take on Tornado Valley in the Great Southern Star later this month. For more, you can follow Adam Hamilton on Twitter there. And from the US, New Zealand bred mare Sha Tin was named the US Pacing Mare of the Year at the end of 2018. That is, of course, the culmination of the North American racing season. A massive congratulations to her New Zealand breeder, Grant Crabb. Well, it's a pleasure to welcome onto the podcast this week Scott Phelan. Of course, you'll know him best as a trainer and driver in the North Island. But Scott, I wanted to chat to you around your role as a mentor for the young drivers in the North and understand it's coming up almost a year since you started. Yeah, no, that's right, Jess. Um, yeah, it's been almost a year and, um, you know, it's progressing slowly at the moment. But, um, you know, I think we're going the right direction. Okay, and in layman's terms, Scott, uh, mentor for, for young people, I guess that's quite a broad um, title for what you're able to do for these young people. Yeah, well, that, well that, it is a bit, um, but like it's just helping out uh, race days with, um, with you know, with stipendary stewards if they've got on a go and some inquiries, um, helping out with their races, their drives, um, even, even off the track things, if they want to talk to someone about it um, that's impartial to what they've uh, doing, you know, I'm always there. I guess the the pressure now more than ever, ever Scott. Um, back in the day when a lot of drivers were starting out, you didn't have social media, you didn't have that pressure of people being able to go back and watch the races over and over. So it seems like they're dealing with a lot more pressure than maybe drivers are used to. Um, yeah, you could, you could probably see it that way. I mean, trainers get to go over their drives a lot more and and really critique it into the last little. Last little thing, so um, probably a while ago, you know, they got to see it first hand on the race day, and that was about it. So, um, yeah, they're probably going to get critiqued a lot more um, than they used to, anyway. And what do you find some of the um, biggest jobs you have in this role? What What are the main things that the young people are looking for from you? Oh, well, look, at, at the moment, it's been pretty quiet. I mean, it's just mainly the race day I've been helping them out with. Um, Obviously, go to all the courses that they do with cadets and and field days and all that sort of thing. But um, at the moment, that's about it. At the moment, okay. And if anyone's listening to this and maybe you know they're, they're wanting to approach you or, or get some advice, is your door always open, Scott? Oh, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Um, as I say, look, I've been to those courses and the cadets and that, and, I, and I've spoken to them and and just said, look, if you need anything, it doesn't even have to be race day. If you need 
anyone to talk to or anything about something. So, um, you know, I'm always there. Oh, fantastic. And, it, and it's great to have you in that role too, Scott. And in terms of your career, um, uh, note you're training in your own right and, and so far this season you've had two winners. So is, is training something that you're really going to focus on going forward in your own right? Uh, well, probably not. Um, I don't mind having one around. Um, I'm, at, I'm back working at uh, Barry Purdens now, so uh, uh, I just do my horse from there. And, uh, yeah, look, I just have one at the moment and we just muck around, me and um, my partner, Emma. Um, we just have a horse to ourselves and, and that's about it, really. I guess there's not much pressure if you're just doing it for, for your own enjoyment then. Well, exactly, yeah. Like, um, the only one I've got to put up with when I come in from a bad drive or train a bad at Emma, so... <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> oh, exactly. And and in your career overall, um, of course, you were involved with Barry in the training side of things, but as a driver as well, was there a horse or maybe a race, Scott, that really stands out in your memory as being one of the fondest? Um, yeah, it was a while ago, but um, driving home to DG was, uh, you know, it was, it was, I was pretty privileged to get to drive such a great horse like him. And um, I remember we we beat a shaker maker and into the, into the minion heat. And, um, you know, that was, that was probably my favourite moment, beating a champion with a champion. So, yeah. yeah that'd be it. What kind of horse was he to deal with, Scott, on a personal level? Oh, look, he, he was, he had his little knickknacks. Um, like, even in the paddock, sometimes no one else could catch him bar Katrina. So, um, but look, he, he was a funny horse, but he, he, was, a, he was just, he was a great horse. Oh, wonderful. And I guess going forward, uh, do you have any goals in your career, Scott, that you're targeting, or are you just taking it day by day? Yeah, look, probably um, just day by day, really. I mean, I like to try to beat the last season when it comes to driving wins. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, we, we bought a wee, a, year, a weanling at the sale of last year. Like, we're, we're hoping that we can uh, trade and drive a, a pretty decent race. So um, that, that would be a, a main focus anyway. Oh, fantastic. Well, Scott, I know you're a busy man and you're wearing many hats, so uh, well done on the, the role with the junior drivers and, of course, uh, the, the goals going forward. Thank you very much for your time, as always. No, thanks so much, Jeff. Well, chatting with Jamie Gamerson, who is wearing two hats in this interview. One is the president of the Horrorata Club. And also, Jamie, I just wanted to touch on the fact that you were successful in the Reefton Cup with Franco Hampton. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks very much, Jess. Um, no, that was pretty awesome. Good for the um, few of the guys. Well, the, some of the guys were there at Westport, but couldn't make it to Reefton. But um, no, they're a great, great bunch of guys to train for. And some of them, it's their first horse and love coming to other horses. So, um yeah, he's, he's a bit of a head scratch of that horse, but when he's when you get the right one, he's, he's pretty nice horse, so yeah, we're pretty wrapped. Oh, great, and, and great to see, as you say, a syndicate involved with this horse, and um, for many of these owners, being first-time owners, they might think it's, uh, well, the game's a bit easy. Oh, no, not these guys. Um, we went out on a bit of a limb, me and Natalie, we, we paid I think, 75000 for this horse and didn't have an owner for it at the sales, and um, rang up one of our good owners that are, that's in the horse, and he was there on the day and loved him as well. And um, yeah, within within three days we had all the sin, had all the shares sold. So um, thanks to thanks to Kevin Carl for um, for for organising a few of the few of the new owners as well. So um, but yeah, but they so, hey we've had ups and we've had downs of this horse. Like he um, he got knocked over on Cup Day a couple of years ago when we were all pretty excited to be there, and it took us probably twelve months to um, to get him back to where he is now. So yeah, they've been very patient and. Just let me do what I want to do. So, yeah, it's it's, a, it's it's pretty easy when you can when the owners give you that that free reign, you know. Oh, that is great, and as you say, a real roller coaster. So, I guess those lows, Jamie, make winning a cup like Reefton so much more special. Oh, they do, yeah. And, and the owner, one of the owners, Kevin, he um he's he's got shares and other horses and other stables too, and he always wanted to win a country cup and and run it run a place in the um. In a, in a group race, you know, he raced Holiday Lover with us years ago, which we just about just about won the Great Northern Derby. Got beat in those, I think. So, um, but then he ended up getting a, another um, another placing in a group race with a horse called Spotlight the Belly for Ross Wilson this year as well. So, so he he was over the moon. So, if he had been there, we'd probably still be stuck in Reefton, I'd say. 
<laughs> well, yeah, well, that just epitomises what ownership's all about and just in being involved in those wonderful moments. And, of course, you're not far away from reaching a new milestone, Jamie. I think you're on 194 training wins, so you must be thrilled with the way things are going at the moment. Oh, not too bad. We've been pretty lean the last couple of years. I, I actually I didn't know that. I don't don't sort of worry about that sort of stuff. Just try and just try and do my job. But um, yeah, the last couple of years have been pretty lean. We just haven't had the horsepower, and we sold a lot of horses two or three years ago. And um, you know, a few of the guys didn't want to replace them, and and some of them just had other things going on, like after the earthquake and stuff like that. They had more important things. So, but they're starting to come back in now, the guys. So um, yeah, like this year looks like it's um, we're going to be back back on track a little bit. But we've yeah, we've got some nice horses thanks to thanks to some owners and a couple of nice two-year-olds and stuff coming up. So, yeah, so hopefully we'll get um, get back into the high um, double figures this year. will be good. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And, and with the sales coming up, Jamie, are you open to people approaching you if they're looking to get involved in ownership? Oh, yeah, definitely no. And I don't think any trainer's never, never scared of taking new owners on. And um, yeah, we've, we've just had a couple of new guys. We, we got a horse, um, Sky City King, not long ago, and... Three, three or four guys that I've known known for a long time, but they're only young fellas. They rung me and always wanted a horse, and thanks to Terry McMillan, he he actually said, "No, nah, take them on." And we got these uh, five five guys in with just a small percentage, which doesn't cost them much. And mm-hmm. you know, he's had a second and a win out of sort of half a dozen starts, so they they're just stoked, you know. So, but yeah, as, as for going into the yearling sales as well, there's always opportunities, whether they're big or small. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we usually buy buy the odd one or two or three if we can and there's usually usually little shares available if you know, or, or there's big shares as well. Yeah. Oh wonderful. Okay, so you've heard it there. If you want to get involved in ownership, of course you can reach out to Jamie Gamerson. And and in terms of the Hororata Club, as I mentioned, Jamie, you're the president there and very much looking forward to your meeting on the tenth of February on the big grass track at Methvin. Yeah, we're all pray- we're all praying for rain that day, so hopefully it's a sunny day. Like I don't think I've had a dry day since I've been president, so so yeah, everyone's giving me a bit of stick about that. But hopefully this year's this year's the um the, the year we have a sunny day. So, but saying that, last year we it was probably worse in Christchurch than it was at Methven, and um, a lot of people just stay at home. But we ended up having a great day and um, a pretty good year. So um, hopefully we just um, yeah get great fields and a great turn out there and. But no, it's all it's all good fun. It's um, yeah, the club's been going for years, and a few of the guys that are on there have um, probably been in there twice as long as I've been alive. I think so. Um, it's yeah, good good to put something back in, and they're still there, they're still there helping out too. So it's, that's what those organise organisations all about, eh? Oh, definitely, and it seems as though uh, you've got a really progressive thinking club. You, you like to look after your sponsors and the owners, and the program, Jamie, looks great with uh, the Hororata Cup, of course, the feature, but you've got a Neverly Our Phillies heat there as well. Yeah, we we'll sort of um, we'll changed the Neverly Our heat around a little bit this year. We put a condition on it last year because of the wet. We had a real good field, and um, you know, three or four of the top fillies that were racing at the time ended up not racing on the day, so it, we sort of... We got sort of beaten up a bit about that with with our turnover and that. So we thought, well, maybe we'll just try and make it a conditioned one, so it's so it evens things out for all those you know nice fillies, but just not the top echelon, you know. So, um, but it's a great it's a great race and great series. It's been going for years, and hopefully we have a we have a good turnout, and, and they usually go a good time because the mission track's always always fantastic, as we know. So, um, yeah, lo- looking forward to it. So hopefully we get a good turnout. And you've always got great sponsorships, uh, sponsors supporting your race day as well. I understand Garrods, on, Garrods are on board? Yeah, we got Garrods on board last year, so that was great. We um, we needed a cup sponsor at short notice, and uh, Darren's, a, Darren's a good friend of mine. Natalie used to work for them and set Garrods New Zealand up for them. So, But Darren's, um, I race horses for Darren here, and he races horses for us in Australia. So, um, yeah, he, he jumped on board and said, no, I'll be here as long as you need me. So, yeah, they're, they're great for the industry put in a lot of lot of time, a lot of effort and a lot of lot of money, you know. So um, no, we're, we're we're proud to have Garrett attached to Horrata. Yep. Oh, that's great. And of course, last year we saw the inaugural running of the Team Teal race day at Hororata. Duncan McPherson, of course, who founded the campaign in Australia, came over for that. He's coming back for this year, and you guys have uh, a similar day planned with lots of support for Team Teal and ovarian cancer. Yeah, well, it ended up a really good day last year, thanks to Duncan, and we're, we're wrapped that he 
made a special appearance to come over to our meeting. So I think we twisted his arm enough that day to come back this year. So, um, but no, we really got behind it, and and I think a lot of people in the industry do too. So it's a, it's a great cause. Duncan, he does an amazing job. So yeah, so hopefully we're, we're getting a bit more behind it this year. There's, we've got the fashion in the fields, and a um, couple of the girls, Natalie and Katie. Uh, uh, sort of getting it a bit more organised so um, yeah I think it's going to be a pretty good turnout and all for all for a great cause Absolutely, well we're very much looking forward to that Jamie, of course Hororata meeting at Methven on the 10th of February you can find the programme on hrnz.co.nz and there'll be further news around the events for Team Teal as well uh, Jamie, thank you for your time and good luck reaching that milestone, I'm sure it won't be too far away Yeah, cheers Jess, I won't, I won't hold me breath <laughs> Well, in this first edition of the Harness Half Hour for 2019, it's my pleasure to welcome into the Bookmakers segment, James Renshaw. James is kindly joining us uh, to fill in for Richard Wilson, who is away on leave. Uh, James, thanks very much for your time, and I guess it's uh, probably been a crazy few weeks, it'll be fair to say. Yeah, it certainly has, and it's been a festive season for the punters as well. We've... um yeah, we've had a few hits, especially uh, in the multi-sector, uh, a few good collects uh, over the festive periods. OK, and you're kindly going to go through a few of the, of the big bets and multis that have uh, happened over those feature meetings. So where does it all kick off, James? Yeah, we'll kick off with the uh, West Coast circuit. That's a very, very popular circuit at this time of year, get the good crowds and whatnot. Um, so, we, yeah, starting at Westport on the 26th of December, we had a $700 multi uh, midnight Sue at 19s into Air Park Flyer at 380 to return 49,900. Oh. So that was a, a good collect there and a hard one for us to take. <laughs> and um, Westport as well, two days later, uh, $600, I think, uh, six league multi to return 84,000 coming. So oh. Westport will be uh, that, that punter's favourite destination, no doubt. Oh my goodness, Westport, all right. So that's a couple of massive knocks to take at the early stages of the holiday season. And, and where to from there? Where did you follow uh, on from? Two days later at Reefton, another West Coast uh, multi, uh, $110 four-leg multi to return 75000 rolled in when that Alexander Kai come home in, I think, one of the last races there. So, uh, yeah, uh, Richard Wilson, who's, who's obviously on holiday, <laughs> copped a fair few big bangs before he went away, so I think he's had the odd drink or two, I'd say. <laughs> oh, he'll probably need them, my goodness, that that's massive money. Uh, and, of course, we had Auckland over that time as well, so we had Premier Racing as well. Oh, we certainly did. Um, a multi on that night at Alexandra Park, a $200 multi to return 10500 rolled in when... Uh, Al Mack, a, a, a horse from the Purdens, uh, who, who's been very impressive over the festive period, uh, yeah, returned 10500 there. Um, also, Turn It Up that night, who's been a popular horse, obviously winning its last two starts, winning the Auckland Cup. We took 6000 at $2 and $10,000 at $1.95, and, and he rolled home for the punters there. So it mm. was, was a tough night again on uh, Auckland Cup night. OK, and from the premieres, so where, was the, where were the punters loitering around the holiday season, James? Uh, everywhere, everywhere. Um, yeah, Nelson on the, on the first day, Kotari Cullen was a popular, popular horse. We took 4500 at $2.10 and then $5,000 at uh, $1.95. Uh, obviously romping home, a horse from the Dunn stable who had a, a festive period himself at, over the two days at Nelson. Um, t- just touching on the second day yesterday, uh, Dad and Dave, uh, $700 at 13s was, was, was a nice winner to return eight, $8,500. Mm. Uh, Pick a Trick as well was a winner, another John Dunn horse, 2000 over 13000 uh, Nice collect there for that punter. And uh, a few losers, Glen, Glen Liddy Bandit, $9,000 at $1.60 and $9,000 at $1.55, which was a bit of a reprieve for us, so we got a bit of money there. And Kotari Cullen, who as I touched on earlier, was a big winner the first day, but uh, not so on the second day, unfortunately, not come, not, not going too well. And uh, 9000 at $2.10 and uh, another 5500 at $1.90, unfortunately, uh, going amiss for the punter. Oh, well, at least there's been some reprieve for you guys, as you mentioned, some massive returns for punters. And it, it, uh, punters, and it appears, James, that those multi-bet builders, you know, they can start small, but they really do start to add up if you can get them home. Oh, they certainly do, and uh, as we well know now as well, <laughs> some some big collects there over the festive period, which would have definitely helped over Christmas time. But uh, it's been a great and, and busy season 
uh, for, for the harness, obviously, the West Coast circuits, uh, really a good circuit, uh, Cromwell as well. And, uh, yeah, there's some good harness coming up as well. Those, those grass track racings on, on beautiful days with big crowds are, is certainly something, or certainly a pleasure to watch. Absolutely. Well, James, you've done a fantastic job stepping into the fold for Richard, who might need a bit of a, a mental help after those collects. So, um, yeah, he's been, he's been gracing a, a few of the uh, southern tracks um, on a, on his holidays, so um, he, he'll be he'll come back nice and refreshed and uh, hopefully ready to take on the punters. Oh well, thanks very much for stepping in, James, and I'm sure we'll get you on board in the near future. No worries. Thanks, Jess. And in what's coming up harness racing wise this week, it's an extremely busy race week with Wednesday featuring Timaru at the Farlap Raceway, Thursday to the Deep South and Wyndham, Friday a double header with the first day of the Marlborough Circuit kicking off on Friday afternoon in Alexandra Park in the evening. Saturday we've got Waipa racing on the grass for Te Awamutu and Sunday Marlborough will have the second day of their summer circuit. On Monday also, the 21st of January, don't forget down at Ascot Park, the Invercargill Harness Racing Club will hold a meeting on Monday. And that's it for this week's Harness Half Hour. Thanks to HRNZ Marketing. Don't forget the Harness Half Hour podcast is now available on the Punters Lounge, Spotify and also iTunes.